Hi guys, welcome to Mitch Murder Maths. In today's video, we're going to be doing a quick snapshot of a study conducted into the crash risk for beginner and novice riders. This study focused on the long-term effectiveness of pre-learner safety courses and other factors that impact crash risk. You'd be surprised at some of the results. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why and how the study was conducted, what the statistics show, the summary of the paper gave and what my impressions from the study are. Now if you'd like me to do a different study, make sure to comment below with a link to that paper and I'll make sure to give it a read and make another video on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is break down some of the rationale behind the study. So the rationale for this study was that although mo motorcyclists made up 4.5% of registered motor vehicles, they contributed to 20% of all crash-related hospitalizations and 22% of all crash-related fatalities. This over-representation in fat fatalities led to a numerous amount of studies into the root causes and risk factors for motorcyclists. As part of the Australian National Road Safety Strategy, there was a large focus on reducing casualty crashes involving motorcycles with the aim to reduce the annual road trauma deaths in Australia by 30%. This particular study was to identify and address risk factors related to crashes. Other studies that identified factors such as age, gender, education, riding behavior, reason for riding, and riding conditions as risk factors, but these uh, studies looked at these factors individually with no comparison of the association to crashes. So the subject of our study were about 2,000 new riders um, that had recently been licensed less than 12 months prior and they had ridden at least 500 kilometers and more than 12 times in that time period since they'd become licensed. At the time of this study, there was no compulsory rider training to get a license in Victoria, and a lack, there was a lack of consistency between the content of any non-compulsory pre-licensed courses. Riders were interviewed both at the start of the study and the conclusion of the study, with the stories corroborated, corroborated by police crash and offense data. They also answered a questionnaire, um, the Motorcycle Rider Behaviour Questionnaire, which gave them four scales and four errors, speeding, stunts, and protective gear use. And they also used an optimism bias to compare a rider's belief they would crash compared to others in similar cohorts and the impact that had on them crashing. The majority of the data was analysed using a regression model. However, age, gender, riding exposure, and participation in the Vic Ride program were identified as confounding variables and... Therefore, they didn't want to correlate these to an extrapolation of that data. So each group, so they, each group was broken down. So ages were broken down together, genders were broken down together, and writing exposure was broken down together. So that way, those particular factors wouldn't have an impact on the rest of the variables that were being studied. So what were the results? So firstly, we should big thing we should consider there was only 2100 riders uh in this study and about 267 of them reported the crash during the period so not prior to the period not after the period during that study period and the majority of the participants in the study were male around 80 percent so we'll start off looking at some of the unadjusted results before they took out some of those confounding factors and some other factors that uh that we haven't spoken about yet. So riders who attended a pre-learner course had a 41% higher chance of crashing than those who didn't. So those who attended one of those on-range courses where they go through some of the basic skills of riding actually had a higher chance uh, of crashing. Riders with off-road riding experience, however, had a 29% lower chance of crashing compared to those who didn't. So riders who had been riding, you know, in dirt and things like that had a significantly lower chance of crashing compared to others. The odds of crashing during the study increased by 2% for every 1,000 kilometers that they were on the road during the study, which makes sense because the more you're on the road, the more likely to, you are to be in some sort of accident. That, that's a given. Those who had crashed before the study showed an 81% increase in odds of crashing compared to those that hadn't. So, obviously, so there were some riders that weren't learning from some previous mistakes, but we'll get into a little bit more of that later. And then we had riders who had three or more near misses in the previous 12 months showed almost two and a half times more likely to crash than others. For each... Which is pretty nuts. 
The next thing, they had the Likert scale, which was basically based on that 33-question survey I spoke about before, is that those, each time you increased it by a point on that scale, for the likelihood of speeding, you had a 32% increase of being one of those 267 that had crashed during that period. Regular commuting trips and adverse driving conditions showed a small increase of about 15% in the risk of crashing, which makes sense because the more, once again, the more you're on your road in a high congested area, which is usually what happens during a commute, you're at a higher risk because you're in more things and then adverse driving conditions, rain, heavy traffic, all of those things are obviously going to increase your risk of crashing. Um, the big thing is experience seemed to show a decrease um, in risk with those that for each month that they'd held their license, um, they were dropping about 3% in crash risk. And then there was also a slight decrease for those with a car license, obviously understanding how dangerous the road can be and traffic conditions and things like that they had an increase of about 19%. So not nothing to bat an eye at there. So it seems that other factors such as income, employment levels for full-time or part-time, education level, and bike type had impacts. However, due to the size of the study, it was unable to be taken as statistically significant, but it was reading that uh, sport bikes were the most at risk of crashing, with touring bikes being one of the lower ones, cruisers being the lowest. After um, some adjustments were made for the fact that, that people were driving locally, so they knew a little bit the area, the heavy traffic, so things we already knew were risks factors and some of the confounding variables, it showed that there was actually the same risk for that pre-learning course, so regardless of any of the other variables, there seemed to be a risk associated with that pre-learner course each month holding a lasting was actually only a two percent decrease so as much as you go from three percent two percent doesn't sound like a lot in terms of what that is over the long term there's actually a major difference and then the three or four three or more near misses was actually only a 74 percent increase a significant difference to that initial result of two and a half times more at risk and then a smaller change happened for those who had crashed before with an 81% risk increase before all of that statistic modification, down to a 58% risk increase. So this is most of the data that's come out and shown. There are obviously some other data, so I'll link the study in the description, so make sure to check it out if you are interested in some of the more finer details of this study. What this study concluded, so what the study itself concluded, is that right ex Rider experience and training are strong indication of the risk factors. However, the training was the reason this came with the training is that because they came to the conclusion that the riders who did the training had no experience, and so that could potentially be another confounding variable there. And the riders would benefit from an extension to the period of a novice license, and the rider training courses had a long way to improve. Now that we've talked about what they found, I'm just going to go through what some of my takeaways are. So at first, when I read this um, study, I saw the bit with the safety courses indicating higher risk, and I was just like, that's weird. Um, I was quite shocked, but then I realized a few things. There was no theoretical or road rules component, just basic controls. There's a big issue. Those the we're completing the course would have minimal skills to begin with, which is what the study identified, and there was no on-road component. It was only done on a closed course, so learner riders weren't getting any feedback while they were riding on the road. The next one, off-road experience. Now, for me, I can see the benefits of this. You can add a level of control, and the need to navigate effectively off-road is a lot higher on-road. Therefore, there's building... Um, those skills could really, really benefit riders on the road in terms of staying safe. Then couple that with driving experience in a car and you're reducing that risk by a significant amount. Next thing, and this doesn't surprise me, is that past rider behavior is a huge ind indicator on the risk of crash. People that ride stupidly at the start, ride stupidly later and end up crashing more. Don't, don't need to go into that in any more detail than that. 
Um, but I think that a larger study would give us a stronger indication of what these higher risk factors are. And I'm looking forward to seeing what we can find out to reduce the risk that us riders face every day we go out riding. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're surprised by any of the findings like I was, make sure to comment down below and suggest some other papers to look at.